So, since we have seen Master's Theorem, there is a slightly modified version of Master's Theorem, which is also very, very useful. So, let me write it down. Imagine if your recurrence relation of this form, right, where you have Tn equals to Atn by B, right, plus theta of n power k log n power p. Okay. Imagine if you have a recurrence relation like this. Okay. This differs from the traditional master's theorem on this part, right? Because this part is already there in the master's theorem, right? So here, of course, there are some rules here that uh, a got to be greater than equal to 1, right? So basically, a tells me, if, if you think about it, a tells me how many sub-problems I am breaking the larger problem into, right? And uh, n by b tells me the size of each of the sub-problems. Of course, my b also got to be greater than 1, right? Here I have two more variables, k and p, right? My k has to be greater than 0 and p is a real valued number. Basically, p is a real number, right? If, if, if you have this form, then, I mean, if you can remember these extended master theorem formula, you can solve recurrence relations much faster, okay? The, the big change here is in this part. The big change here is in this part, right? So, this part is already there in the traditional master's theorem. This is the big change. So, of course, it requires you to be careful. So, let us write each of the cases, right? Case 1, okay? Case 1. If, if A is greater than B power K, okay? You have A here, you have B here and K here, right? I will show you some examples. First, let me write down the theorem for you. Then, right? So, basically, you are going to compare A with B power K. Based on that, you have cases, right? If A is greater than B par K, then you can write your Tn equals to theta of n log A base B. Okay, this is one case. The second case, slightly more tricky, which is if A is exactly equal to B par K, then, right, if A is exactly equal to B power K, then there are three cases that arise. The first case is is p greater than minus 1? Second case is, is p equal to minus 1? Third case is p less than minus 1. If this is the case, then you can write your Tn as theta of n power log a base b and log p plus 1 n. Okay. So, basically when I write this, what does it mean? It means log n raised to the power p. Okay, so this is basically, whenever I write this, this is log n raised to the power p plus 1. Okay, so when, look at this. So, you only have this term. So, the way I remember this is, the only place where you have this term is when this equality holds. Okay, each of us, of course, each of us will have our own memory trick to remember these cases, right? So, here, if p is equal to minus 1, then your tn is theta of n log a base b log log n. Okay, third case, if p is less than minus 1, then your tn is going to be theta of n log a base b. So, this when p is less than minus 1, this is going to be same as this. Of course, there is a third case. Okay, let me write that, write that down on a different page. So look at this. The first case was A greater than B par K. The second case is A equal to B par K. So, there must be some third case also, right? Corresponding to if A is less than B par K, right? In this case, again, depending on the value of P, if P is greater than or equal to 0, then your Tn is going to be theta of n power K log n power P. Okay, case B, right? If P is less than 0, then your Tn is going to be theta of n par k. Okay, the tricky thing in any of these complex formulations, even in master theorem, right? Uh, the tricky thing is to be able to remember each of these cases. Of course, if, if you think about from first principles, we can actually derive the whole thing. We can, we can actually, I mean, uh, if, if you look at CLRS textbook, there is an optional section 
where they derive the master's theorem it's slightly tricky it's way, it's fairly lengthy to derive it but you can actually derive even these each of these cases you can derive each of these cases you can derive if you're very careful and patient about it right so there, there are two ways of doing it if you can remember this obviously that's heaven because you don't have to worry about it or if you have the capacity to derive it there and then of course deriving it is non trivial to be honest with you because if you look at the clrs derivation of the standard masters theorem itself it takes considerable amount of effort but it is doable okay so if you can remember these forms then you can you can solve given any reconciliation you can solve the solution you can find the solution very very qu quickly of course these conditions need to be satisfied and you have this basically what you're doing here if you think about logically is you are comparing a with b par k okay you are comparing a with b par k okay if it is greater there is some solution if it is equal there are cases if it is less there are cases so let's take an example and solve it okay so let's say you may have tn equals to 2tn by 2 plus n log square n okay let's say you may have this okay now of course it's very very important to write down what each of the variables are this is my a here my a equals to 2 right my b equals to 2 right this is my a this is my b look at this this is my a this is my b my k is the exponent on n p is the exponent on log right so what is my k my k is equal to 1 right and my p is equal to 2 look at this this is important first get your variables right Okay, you have these four variables. What do you have to compare? You have to compare a and b power k. What is a now? a is 2. What is b power k? Which is 2. So, a is equal to b power k. Which means you have to go to case 2. Okay, so let's go into case 2. So, this is what is applicable here. This case is what is applicable. Now, let's see. Now, what do I have? I have three cases now. Is p greater than minus 1? Equal to minus 1? Less than minus 1? If you look at it, p is equal to 2 for me. So, this case will be triggered. So, what do I have? I have case 2a. I have case 2a. So, in the case of case 2a, what is my tn? My tn is of this form, right? My tn in the case of 2a is theta of log, sorry, a n power log a base b, right? Log p plus 1 n. Now, if you start replacing everything, right? This is my case 2a, right? Which is applicable here. Now, what is log log a base b? a is 2. This is base 2. So, this is equal to 1 because 2 power 1 equals to 2. So, so in our case, what happens? My tn now for this problem, my tn is going to be theta of, okay, n power 1, right? What about log n power p plus 1? p is 2, right? So, I'll have log n power 3 because p is 2, p plus 1 is this. So, look at this. So, if my if my recurrence relation, look at this, this recurrence relation here, this recurrence relation fits very, very nicely, fits very, very nicely into this format that we have, right? Because you have, th this part is anyway there in master's theorem also, the traditional master's theorem. The only major difference here is you have n raised to power k and log n raised to power p okay so when you have something of this form then you can quickly apply of course you you should be able to remember these cases if you can remember these cases and if your problem is of this form like this like this example right you just write down what is a b k and p you can quickly solve problems